Brad Davis with Acoustic Music Pro, and I want to show you this really cool instrument. It's called the Six String Deering Banjo. The neat thing about this banjo is it's tuned like a guitar, and I'm a guitar player. So what's really neat about this instrument is it allows me to add flavor to my show. I can play a song on this as opposed to playing it on my guitar and add a totally different sound. Or if I get called to play in a band, I can play this instead of my guitar and give them something really juicy, some kind of a new sounding um, uh, tones from this instrument that I wouldn't get from my guitar. Or on a session, a lot of times I'll get called on a session and they'll say, you know, could you give us something different than a guitar today? And I'll pull out this during banjo and I'll use it. I use it on a lot of soundtracks uh, with Billy Bob Thornton and a lot of records for CMH. Um, it's been a real main instrument for me uh, in, the, in the studio. So there's so many things you can do with this, and you can add so, so much new life into your playing by just adding this instrument. So I think you really enjoy trying it out. So I hope you enjoy the, the lesson today, and I want to show you a lot of things that you can do on this as a guitar player. Take exactly what you know on the guitar and apply it to this instrument, and all of a sudden you've got a brand new instrument, a brand new sound, and something that will really make you want to play. Okay, first we're going to start with a rhythm pass that's going to show you how to play rhythm with your flat pick. There's three ways to play with this. I'll tell you quickly and then let's get on with this rhythm. You're going to play this banjo with your flat pick. You're going to play it with a flat pick and your two fingers here called a hybrid. And then we're going to play it with standard banjo picks. You've got three ways to do it. This first way incorporates the flat pick and we can incorporate a simple strum. This strum doesn't cover the whole banjo. You don't want to strum this whole thing. It would be way too much and way too heavy. And you want to be able to strum it just on a few strings. I'm going to show you what that sounds like. I'm going to hold my G here in F position and raise up my middle finger so that G is open. Now I'm not holding the B note there. And I'm going to hit a bass note and a strum. It's almost like a boom, chuck a boom, chuck a boom, chuck a boom, chuck a like you do on a guitar. Think you're going to be playing the same stuff that you did on your guitar on this. That's how easy it's going to be. So here's how this little strum goes. I'm only hitting the third and the second string. That's all I'm hitting. I don't want to hit a lot. And I'll show you once we move up to a lower key or a lower chord up here. I'll show you what that sounds like. But let's try this high. Real simple strum. I'm using that fourth string with a G note as my bass note, keeping everything high banjo-y, okay? If I go to my D, same thing. Notice I'm not hitting this really hard. I'm just hitting it just real nice and easy. If I go to a lower chord, it's going to sound like this. You're probably thinking, well, that's great for the high. What do I do for the low? Let's say we grab the G, and I'm going to start with this bass note. And I'm going to hit the fourth and third string, kind of like you would on a regular guitar. I'm just not going to grab the whole strum. And I'm going to try to push through on my bass note. And when I strum, I'm going to hit it as if I would hit my all, my all at one time, but I'm only hitting two strings. I want it to sound like one string. And I'm doing my upstroke on my, on my D string. So you get the idea. We're not going to play the whole thing. We just want to make it sound like Brother Dave Macon. Some old, cool, nostalgic, legendary banjo sound. And that little strum will do it for you. Anytime you've got a bass note, pick two strings as your strumming, your strumming accent to that bass note, and you'll be just fine. All right, let's add the cross-picking to that rhythm. Um, the rhythm first, and then cross-picking, and then we can blend those together. But a lot of times you want just a good, nice roll, just a simple roll, a three-note roll in the studio or live with your band. And there's a couple ways to do that, using chords that are basically higher in tone. Here's a low F, here's a high F, here's a G, here's a high G. 
here's a C, here's a high C. And sometimes what you want to do is you want to think two different dimensions here. You want to think high G. If I'm in the key of G, it'd be really nice to start with this one, this particular F position G. F here, up a whole step. I'm going to lift my middle finger up so I've got that G ringing. And I'm going to do a three note roll. I'm going to do 4 3 2, 4 3 2, 4 3 2, back and forth and back and forth. Real simple. Just like you do on the guitar. forth real nice and easy. Let your right hand, if, if you've been playing a guitar for a good while, or maybe you haven't been playing for a good while, but you've got a great sense of where your right hand is on the guitar, let your right hand kind of do its thing to get its own balance. You know, don't worry too much about it. Just grab it like you would a guitar and play exactly how you do on guitar and try to let that fit this instrument. So I've got these high chords like this that I'm playing on, and my D also fits that same bow. Using a three a three string roll like that, let's go to the low side of the chords using low on the on the six, five, and four strings and see what that sounds like. So we got G, and what I'm gonna do on G is I'm gonna use these three strings, six, four, and three, and that's gonna be my three string roll. The reason why I'm doing that is because the B is not quite as important. We want that low. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. We want to hear that downbeat, that one beat, and this bass gets it gets it for us using the three strings. We skip over the fifth. Let's try it again, and then I'm going to go to C, and I'll go to F. So I'll change a few chords there. See what that sounds like. And I'm back into the G. So a couple ideas that you can do with the low strings or the low side of the chords and with the high side and mix those up. I want to show you one thing before we stop out of this three note pattern and let you hear something that's further up the neck just a little bit so you can hear what's going on. I'm going to play a little bit of a phrase here. I'm in the key of G, and I've got these notes, and I'm going to let everything ring 3, 2, 1, and let you hear what it sounds like. This is just a little piece that I wrote on this, giving you ideas to write your own stuff, so you can be real creative with this instrument. On my C, back to G. stuff that you can do with this. I mean, sky's the limit, especially if you play guitar, you can just add what you're doing on guitar onto this instrument and have a blast. Okay. Let's look at the four note cross picking roll on the Deering banjo. Remember, this is a guitar. It's a tune just like a guitar. So it's going to be exactly like your guitar. So I'm going to do a thing that I refer to as the RPP, the rhythm pick pattern. And I'm basically going to do six, four, three, two. It's so down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Six, four, three, two for G. C is going to be four, three, or five, four, three, two. Excuse me, five, four, three, two. And D is going to be four, three, two, one. So I'm going to run through G, C, D. Let you hear what it sounds like with this roll slowly. Six, 
four three two five four three two five four three two and four three two one. E minor is going to be six four three two five four three two five four three two. So I'm mixing my three note roll with the four note roll and it really makes it sound great. Let's do it one more time and I'm going to mix those together. Let's start with the three note roll and then we'll add the four note in. Mixing the four note and the three note cross picking roll, and it's just a nice, cool little roll that you can do on this, just like I would do on my acoustic guitar. All right, now let's try the hybrid. So, you're going to take your flat pick and you're going to take these two fingers, and you're basically going to use those as a roll. In other words, not like this with a thumb, but this will be the thumb. These two guys will be the thumb, and these will be the other fingers. So, um, I'm going to play something with it so you can hear what it sounds like. And I'm basically going to go to this high G, F, up a whole step high G with my third finger off, just because it rings really nice. I could leave it down, but I'm going to leave it off because I like the way it sounds. And I'm going to play a roll for you. And I'll explain the roll. I want you to hear it first. like a banjo at that point. I'm not using so much this ring finger right now, I'm just using this middle finger. And what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the same three, three note pattern that we did just a minute ago. It's the same pattern, but I'm using the middle finger to grab my upstrokes. As I'm playing this hybrid, I'm using this for some of the upstrokes this for the downstrokes and a few of the upstrokes. So I want to play the three, three note cross picking pattern again and then I'm going to do it with a hybrid. I want you to see what it sounds like one more time. Let's put them back to back. And I'm going to play the same thing but I'm going to use my middle finger now. Now with a pick. same pattern but I'm using that middle finger. What I'm doing is I'm also laying my hand down on the bridge now. I'm changing my uh, stability point right now to the bridge. So I'm able to go instead of how I'm up right here off the bridge, now I'm down. And I'm able to pull a real nice roll. just three strings. Let's go to a lower set of strings so you can hear it on that. hybrid on the three note. Let's use the hybrid on the four note, okay? We'll start with the low. So 
you can kind of hear how that sounds like a nice little banjo roll. Everybody will think you're the banjo player in the band, but really you'll be the guitar player hiding behind the Deering six string. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Um, the hybrid can also incorporate this ring finger, and I just want to point that out real quick. I tend to use that on a little bit bluesier stuff. And uh, so just for this example, I'm going to play a little bit of this blues pass on this banjo. And it's the same thing I play on guitar, but I'm going to use both these two fingers here in conjunction with a pick. I'm going to hold my G down, uh, my low G, and let you hear what it sounds like. So these two fingers play the upstrokes, okay? So I'm going, and I'm playing all three strings the six, the four, and the three, all at the same time to give it a almost a strum, like a full strum that we talked about earlier in one of the guitar courses, where you strum all the way through. I'm grabbing those all at one time, so I'm going. pattern right there on the D. And notice I'm on, the, I'm on the head as well. When I played the two fingers, I was down on the head and the bridge, and I'm down there as well, because it just fits this, uh, this pulling kind of feeling that you're getting off these two fingers to have a hand down. Like I said, it's a very Telecaster hybrid kind of a uh, kind of a position to have with your right hand. So notice how those two fingers are working together at the same time. Doing three notes at one time when you're pulling at the very start. So if you're doing a playing some crazy chords there, but I want to let you know that every time I'm hitting it, I'm acknowledging the fact that the chord's changing by targeting the root note. Why would you want to use these other fingers and the pick? Why not just the pick? Why not just banjo picks? If you're going to use a three finger roll using these, one, two, and three, you could just use banjo picks. And that's a great way to do it. We're going to show that in a minute. The neat thing about using these fingers and your pick is you've still got your flat picking mechanism at hand. You haven't dropped that. In other words, when you go to banjo picks, you're stepping into a whole new world for a, band, for a guitar player and you need to really make sure you're comfortable with that. The neat thing about doing this is I can do a roll and then I can do a flat picking lead with my pick. I'm able to still play my leads with my pick and then I'm able to do a, a roll with the fingers. Now you're probably saying, well, you know, you know, the tone's different and the tone is different. I'm putting my hand on the head, slightly muffling the head, and, and I'm getting a little bit of a muffled tone. It's a little bit of a quieter tone for a banjo, but I can tell you this, the times that I've used it on soundtracks and played it with other people uh, in jamming is the tone is sweet and for a banjo that's really a great thing to have, it's a great sweet tone. And the hybrid kind of gives it to you. So I'm able to do both using the hybrid and the pick. And if we're flat pickers we want to keep our flat pick pretty handy. So I'm going to roll with these two fingers and the hybrid and, and the pick and show you how I can go between different chords, different bass notes, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to target each change by a three string hit. In other words, I'm going to be taking the G chord, so to speak, and take six and four and three, and I'm going to hit those all at one time with all three, not fingers, but these two guys and my pick. 
I'll just say that's one finger and here's two fingers. So I'm going to hit them all at one time. And when I go to my F, I'm going to hit them all at one time. My F sharp over D, hit them all at one time. My G and my B flat, same thing. So I'm going to target those each time I change to give everybody the opportunity to go, Brad's changing chords, he knows where he's going. So I got my G rolling here, and I'm going to hit Hit it again. Lighten up and hit it again. Let's go to the F. See how it makes it sound a lot dynamic whenever you basically dot that front of the measure. You could do it two measures and then hit the one and dot it so to speak. Basically emphasize that note with the three those three notes right there. Same thing with a C. I'm still doing three notes at one time. I'm doing four three two. Sizing three. So I'm using those three to do that. That was three strings consecutive together as opposed to on the G where I'm using six, four, and three, and I'm spreading it out a little bit just from taste. It's just the fact that I like the way that sounds without this B note being heard real loud. But that's the hybrid. Let's move on.